Hello, everybody. This is our video for uh, the week of week 13, November 1st through 5th. Remember that on uh, no November 2nd, which is a Tuesday, your students have off. Uh, but this is what we'll be doing that week. So again, um, you'll be finding all of everything I'm talking about under classwork. Uh, the first thing <clears throat> is just a reminder, I'm going to be showing you the day by day agenda for November because it's going to be in November next week. Uh, just a reminder that if your student is absent, they need to check the day by day agenda when they get back to see what they missed. And we do things on a pretty uh, a pattern. So typically, if they check the agenda, they'll, if I, the notes I give them will be enough to understand what they've missed. I'm happy to give them additional help, explain something if they don't understand it. But um, it is like, so let's just pretend little Sally is absent on Monday. On Tuesday, when she gets back, she needs to come to classwork day by day agenda and see what she missed. She will do that while her classmates are doing the start strong, which is our bell ringer. Um, and she does not get in trouble for missing the start strong because it's her job to see what she missed the day before. Um, and she's responsible for that. Um, so that's what I'll be showing you. Uh, so I'll go ahead and get into our agenda for next week. So uh, Monday and Tuesday, we will be reading our novel chapters, or I'm sorry, Monday and Wednesday, we'll be reading our novel chapters 14 through 16. We'll be reading it, analyzing it, discussing it, and writing about it in their interactive notebooks. On Thursday, I will give them time to do Membean and Quill in class. Again, they have to do 45 minutes of Membean to get full credit, and they have to pass two lessons of Quill to get full credit. They can get extra credit by passing four or more lessons of Quill and doing uh, 45, uh, 60 minutes of Membean. Uh, and then on Friday, we will do um, their grammar and vocab in the um, interactive notebooks. And we do activities together with that. And then typically we do um, a Kahoot if we have time to just practice. Um, so just one thing that might be of interest to parents uh, in classwork, you can go down to data, and I know I've talked about this before, but you can go to individual writing scores, open that up, and you can basically see all the scores your students have earned on the writing we're doing in class. So we haven't done an essay yet. We will at the end of the semester. Uh, most of their, the longest writing they've done is extended responses, which are pretty meaty academic paragraphs. Um, and uh, they also do short answer responses, which are typically one to three sentences. Those are uh, very, very important also, but these are the ones that I, um, uh, the extended responses are the ones that are in this data sheet. And this shows the date they did an assignment, what it was called, and the nine to 10 specific elements I am assessing and how, uh, what the score, what the rubric means. Um, for the second quarter, I've changed a couple of the elements because they should be progressing in their writing. Um, and so for the first quarter, uh, the being able to um, put spaces between words was, uh, was, was something that I was assessing. Well, now that's just expected. And so now we're adding in conclusions and transitions and students know these things. Um, uh, but this is just something you can check anytime. And if you see all fives there, then that means your student didn't do it. And it probably lines up to the grade book and you should check in with your student and me also if you have any questions. Um, all right, I think that that is it. Uh, have a great weekend.